join me as we talk all things true crime. And shattered. The parents have called me out and love, but the mother has went on a wall, came out, now they can't find her. Turn it over to another agency. Chad, where are Lori's kids? They've been missing for four months. You have nothing to say? Four were stabbed multiple times and were likely asleep during the attack. Some had defensive wounds. Most of them had just like one that was the lethal uh, stab wound. Oh, what a tangled web we weave. Once I told a lie, then I told my family. I I had to keep lying. Max Urian is a demon. We haven't cleared anybody. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for being here tonight. I have a special guest who I'm going to bring on. Her name is Alex Erickson. I know many of you guys know her. If you have not followed her channel, I highly recommend it. She has touched on so many cases, including Watts, and just has a lot of knowledge, even in the Watts case. So I wanted her to come on and us to do one of our first live streams. I hope we can do more um, on Watts case because I know that you know you have really extensive research yourself. So thank you for being here. I am so happy to be here. Thank you for having me. And yeah, Watts brought me to YouTube, but one of the first places I landed was here. So it's really cool. Awesome. I'm glad to hear that. And hello, everyone in chat. I saw Florida Bass Fishing and Johnny and all my moderators and everyone joining. Music City Mom has been a member for five months. So I just wanted to thank her very quickly before we start digging into things. Um, Tony, good to see you and everyone else. Good to see you guys. I didn't know where to start with our conversation on this case. I know we did a live stream on your channel and we listened to the Watts um, prison phone calls between his family and himself. And so here I was just like, I guess the best I can do is ma maybe lay out the best I can my, my base of my theory, which has a lot to do with the explosion theory. I'm curious in chat yeah. um, how many of you guys are familiar with the explosion theory or how many of you guys like believe in it. If you don't believe in it, just say number two. If you do believe in it or you know about it, just press one. So I just want to get like a little feel for those who kind of know like a little bit of that theory because I know it's been out there for a while. And yeah, it, it's a lot... Um, <laughs> a lot to go through. I kind of had like a little bit of a problem editing like how to lay it out because it's very, very deep. It's it's more than just, oh, I think this case is very deep. So I think it's more than just Chris yeah. wanted to be with his mistress. So he got rid of his family personally. I don't know how you feel. Um, I know that like you're not on board um, a with explosion theory, but I'm curious like your thoughts. I'm open to it. Well, okay. So I'm open to it because there are some really major things that do line up. Like I told, like when I messaged Amber earlier, I did, we didn't get into it because I wanted to save it for the live, but I just mentioned the like the political ties and some of that. So I, some of it lines up. I definitely lean on the side of, I don't believe it was just Chris there that night. So that's kind of where I'm at right now, but I'm not sure, you know, how much further than that it goes. Okay, so it seems like chat is sort of on the same page. Some of them on board with it, know about the explosion theory, believe in it. Other people just willing to listen. So I guess we'll just jump right in and, of course, have an open mind. Um, I think if you're here on this channel, you do have an open mind. And I know you have an open mind. And hello, Seth. It's good to see you. Um, so I, I don't know, I, I clip some stuff together. I know that I'm going to have to pause it and kind of explain more. Um, but I guess we'll just get right Yay. into it. So get ready. <laughs> okay, I am so excited for this because like, I, I just love, I love hearing anybody's theory. But this one is interesting and coming from you. Yeah, I'm just looking forward to it. So I'm ready. It's hard to make sense of it too, because 
I don't know exactly how the explosion would have taken place. So when it comes down to those little technicalities, like I'm not an arsonist, like I just don't know. Like all I know is <laughs> it's, it's very, it, the area was, um, remember, I don't know if you know this, but in the discovery files, it mentions something about them not using a flash on their camera because the flash itself could cause explosion. So when they were oh, wow, doing- no, I didn't. Yeah, when they were doing like the crime scene um, pictures and stuff like that, it's mentioned in the discovery files that the the type of flash that they were using and stuff, they had to be careful. And the clips that I have, it starts off with Coder talking to Chris about recovering the children's bodies out of the tank. And he says something like, now we can't go in there and just start drilling because the sparks could cause an explosion. And Chris agrees. He's like, yes. So you know, in itself, that's it's flammable out there. So again, Lou, thank you so much for the super sticker guys. Brace yourself. Cause again, this is going to be kind of hard for me to explain, but I'm willing to do it. <laughs> so let's do this. You got this and it's going to be great. Okay. Thanks, babe. Think of it, but we're very, very concerned about how to get those kids out. Um, you can imagine the camera really cut a hole in that tank if the sparks will blow something. Yeah. I believe this dates all the way back to April 2017, before Nicole Kessinger even meets the Watts and before she Googles Chris and Shanann that summer. It has something to do with the house explosion that Anna Darko was a part of. This house explosion was contributed to Anna Darko not maintaining a well that actually was leaking toxic fumes into the house and eventually it exploded and the family sued Anna Darko for millions. Learn the remains of two people have been pulled from the rubble of this house explosion in Firestone. Two other people inside that same home, they're in the hospital right now and tonight we know one of the victims is a teacher at Mountain Range High in Westminster. It has been windy all day. We've seen pieces of insulation like this that's coming from the devastated home fly out of that de devastated home, filling this entire neighborhood. We've also seen family and friends gather near the home waiting for investigators to recover those missing bodies and tonight I spoke exclusively to a man who tells me he helped one of the people inside this devastated home escape the fire. Their cars are there. And all of a sudden the house shook and we heard a loud bang. It's what most neighbors on Twilight Avenue will tell you they felt before they discovered one of the homes in their neighborhood was engulfed in flames. There was debris everywhere and insulation falling all over the place. It was scary. Miguel Casteda was pulling into work at this construction site behind the engulfed home. He says he and a couple of his co-workers ran to help the people inside the home. They spotted a young boy crying for help. We asked him who, who lived, who's inside the house. He said, my mom, my dad, my uncle. Miguel then ran back and grabbed a forklift from the construction site. Yeah. We used a forklift to pick yeah, up the to house leave, because the house collapsed. The, the house collapsed and we tried to pick up the house a little bit to look inside. Miguel says he was able to pull out just one person. We tried to put the lady and we take it out. The victim's family didn't want to go on camera, but have set up a GoFundMe account as investigators piece together what caused this horrific tragedy. I am here. Okay, so to recap a little bit, that house explosion was April 2017. Um, the Watts murders happens in 2018. So this is sort of like a background of my research and my explosion theory. Um, what I do know is Nicole Kessinger worked in the safety department for Anadarko. And once this house explosion happened, Anna Darko were, was having a bunch of safety meetings and um, trying to make it seem like they were getting back on track. I say trying because it's come out even after um, this house explosion that they were really in no hurry to kind of fix regulations and um, issues that they had, including they were told to have cameras out at their survey tanks. They did not. So just keep that in mind. I also have linked some articles in the description box for those who want like more on this background information of the oil company and protocols and safety measures that they were just skipping and totally um, not even paying attention to for the sake of profit. So that's what we kind of have to remember is this is so Anadarko could, you know, pocket money and profits 
and not spend money on regulating um, this oil issue. And it happens because of fracking. So the other thing is we have to, you have to look up fracking. Fracking is a type of oil drilling that they do where it's underground um, pipes and stuff like that. So for this house explosion, this is the mom who lived in that house. This is sort of like her victim impact statement because they sued Anna Darko for wrongful death lawsuit. So what was happening also is Anna Darko was, they were building houses and new like residents and businesses and schools on top of these areas that had these fracking wells underground. So that this woman's house was built over a well that or near a well that had, um, had not been maintained and it was leaking um, fumes into their basement pretty much from the ground. So wow. the, the same crack that was in the um, pipe that blew up this house, mm. for those who are wondering what the connection is, you have to understand in the Watts case, his whole purpose for going to that oil tank on Monday when the murders took place is to fix and check an, a well site that was had the same issue. So Chris oh. and his co were going out there to address a leak that was very much like this leak. So the oil leak in the Watts case, I believe, is very vital. And it you have to kind of dig into the co-workers' interviews. And in their interviews, Troy McCoy says, um, ever since the house explosion, we were being very careful. And so it wasn't unusual for Chris to go um, out there and check the oil site. Um let me, before we listen to her victim impact statement, I want to just share my screen for this right here, which was on the, th no, not this, the thumbnail or the, the title of the live says, Chris was asking to go back to work on the days after his family was missing. So why is that, you know, interesting? I believe it has something to do with the explosion plan that never ended up happening. Hold on, let me see if this is okay. So this is um, from Sandy it says Sandy Rusek was upset and told me that she and her husband believe that the, her daughter and granddaughter's disappearance involved foul play and that she honestly believes that her son-in-law was involved in the disappearance of her daughter and granddaughters. She stated that Christopher is acting weird and out of the ordinary. She said that Christopher is telling people he has to go to work. And that just doesn't seem right. She felt he was going to out to pour oil on the bodies to dispose of them. So he, she interpreted it as he's going to, you know, try to hide things with the bodies. Me, when I'm looking into this, the fact that he was adamant about, you know, telling people that he had to get back to work. Um, there's also in the body cam footage, which we've gone through like so many streams ago, that he was saying to the officer, like, should I go out and drive around? Um, in my opinion, it kind of leads, of course, it's my theory and, and how I'm viewing this stuff. I feel he needed to get back to the oil field to finish the explosion so that he could get the kids back. I think they were being held as collateral. So I know for those who are new to this channel, I saw some of them saying that they came from Jen Lu's like, uh, hi, thank you for being here. Um, this is a crazy theory for those who are kind of new. But if you've been following me a while, I think <laughs> you kind of have some sort of like um, basis for where I'm going with certain theories. But in my opinion, I think that him being so adamant about should I leave? Should I go look for them? He was asking the officers that. And he was told to stay at the house. It's best for him to just stay there. Um, he kept asking it to different officers in the body cam footage. And then here, Sandy is saying, you know, in her note to the officers that, like, he's acting weird. He's telling people that he has to go to work. So, again, I just think that that could be circumstantial evidence for my theory that he needed to go complete the job to get the children back. Because again, we don't have a time of death for anybody. So when he's saying I right. need to get back, um, I'm feeling like he thought if he completed the job that you know some of his family would still be alive. Again, I do think that he always wanted Shanann to be a part of this explosion. 
So I don't think that he wanted to save her. I think he was done with her. Um, we've kind of talked about how MK and Troy, his coworker slash friend, were telling people that he that Shanann was cheating on him. So I just think that there was um, resentment built up and he was done with Shanann. But again, let me just carry on. And Tony's on board with it. So whew, I can okay. read it. And before you <laughs> well, before you go further, you said something the other day that was so interesting. I think I have a little delay and I'm sorry about that. But about this um, theory that I had never thought about before, because some of this takes me, you know, it's a... I don't know some of it I'm I'm on the fence about right but yeah. it's so interesting that we have Nicole Kessinger who works here in the safety department at Anna Darko however she also is a practice like she practices you know the religion that she does and the Gaia and all that kind of stuff and it's it doesn't necessarily line up how you would do this for a job while you're also like following that religion, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then you're even like a hit, the hippie kind of, you know, that kind of person. Yeah. And, you know, there's so many things uh, that I want to dig into as far as, like you said, her, her spiritual beliefs and, and where you feel like mm -hmm. she kind of falls in that realm. Um, there are hints of that in this case where you're like, oh, like the um, the five elements, like earth, wind, water, fire. Um, what am I missing? <laughs> or no, you got it. Um, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, well, there's stuff like that that I found in this case that I do want to um, pick out. But the main thing about like this whole, she was a geologist. She was si sort of a hippie girl. Why was she working in the oil field? I think that the thing that sets it apart is a lot of people were against fracking. So it's not so much that they don't believe in drilling for oil. Some of these um, people, I think it has to do with how they're getting this oil and the, the issues that it causes to the earth. So fracking has been known to, like I said, that house explosion um, out where the tanks were found, where, where the bodies were, that whole ranch area had... Um, issues years prior. Hold on. I have an article to pull up. This we've already gone through. This is 2014. So obviously four years before the murders, this is the rancher who owns the area that the tanks are on. And he, this whole article, we've gone through it, um, basically talks about how he was ready to work alongside of Anadarko and oil companies and run his ranching business while also allowing them to, um, frack for oil. So this is before this same company is starting to leak oil and um, waste and just pollutants into his his yard. So in his ranch area. So if you look up all this stuff, which we don't have time tonight, but trust me, there were times where this fracking procedure had polluted the water on the rancher's property. So it causes a lot of problems. It's not just, oh, it, it's um, yeah. fracking is just a new way. So I think what what really like might bother people like NK, in my opinion, and leave Jim alone and maybe even NK's dad is the greed in these oil companies that they're they're doing this process and it's polluting the earth. It's polluting. Um, it's causing deaths, obviously. So I don't think that they're against oil mining. I think they're against fracking. So the right. other part, too, is, you know, they were building all these houses and stuff, and they weren't telling the people buying the houses that there were pipes underneath or around their house. So people are living there, like that one house that exploded, and they're not realizing that they're very close to danger, potentially. And thank you so much for the super chats. I just want to, like, thank you while we have it paused. Hello, Punksy, and thank you so much. Okay, so let me just continue on. Stay with me, everybody. And if you haven't hit that like button, hit it. And also, if you're looking to follow Alex Erickson, her links are in the description box as well, okay? to share with you my story and to support change that will hopefully keep this from ever happening again. 
Nobody should ever have to experience what my family has had to go through these past almost two years. I feel a direct responsibility to keep that from happening. On April 17, 2017, my home exploded because odorless natural gas had saturated the soils and invaded the drains into my house, escaping from a nearby oil and gas well. This gas collected in my basement after a well that had been shut off, had been a shut-in well for about a year, was turned back on. My husband Mark and brother Joey were working in the basement at the time, and they did not survive the explosion. There have been several stories blaming the explosion on a hot water heater installation. These stories could not be further from the truth. Nothing they did caused the explosion. So there was fake news coming out, like as this wrongful death lawsuit was against Anna Darko, and they were spreading fake news that the house explosion wasn't due to fracking and that it was because they were, you know, changing out their water heater and, and something like that, an accident had taken place. So she's here in her victim impact statement while she's suing Anna Darko, and they did win. Um, they got an undisclosed amount, um, which also leads mm -hmm. me to think that people who were possibly um, planning another mimicked um, explosion at Survey 319 were hoping for some sort of payout as well, which comes into... Shanann would have been killed in the explosion. Um, Valerie, thank you so much. 30 months. Thank you. And she says, thank you for continuing to cover this case. I'm only covering Aww. this case for people like you who want me to. <laughs> and Seth, you thanked me earlier for covering the Watts case. Thank you so much for the super chat. And honestly, I, like I said, I cover other cases throughout the week, but Thursdays are for Watts. And yeah, I definitely um, appreciate you guys support and wanting um, more of it. And yes, Justice, they got millions. It was undisclosed, but you know it was in the millions. My home and family were destroyed because my house was next to a leaking flow line that had been left connected to the well. It is public knowledge that the well was owned by Anadarko and that Anadarko had acquired the well from another company, Noble Energy. The gas leak went undetected for four months. It should have been inspected and it should have been pressure tested. On the day of the explosion, I remember being blown into the air and trapped between falling debris. The entire house was lifted off of its foundation. It fell completely to one side. My son had to crawl on his hands and knees through a tunnel to a window and make the decision to jump out and save his own life. In September and August 2017, before Nicole Kessinger ever worked with Chris, she Googles their names on Facebook and starts cyber stalking them. Another aspect in this case that you would need to look into to understand this theory is the leak that was taken place with 319's well that Chris and his co-workers were looking into and they left running and leaking over the weekend. It is not a coincidence that the leak happened on Friday and all of this was premeditated. And so this is a statement and thank you so much, Jay, for membership for three months. Um, spiritual, LOL, you mean satanic. So the thing about what I meant by spiritual is there's elements in what we have of her that show she was into like, you know, crystals and stuff like that. Crystals, in my opinion, and many others, it doesn't mean it equals Satanism. Um, but I do agree with you. There were elements that we found out that were linked to a Satanist um, priest or spiritual advisor. But the spiritual aspect is more to do with the other elements that are in the case, like the crystals looking up and um, some place in Peru she visited and um, just stuff that she talked about, like the Dead Sea Scrolls and stuff like that. So I just wanted to clarify that. So this is a statement from the district attorney. It is not a typographical error in the report. The detectives are reporting what was contained in the data from her phone, Nicole Kessinger's phone. I don't know the answers to the questions of why or how those dates ended up in her phone. So that is in regards to her cyber stalking the family before she ever worked with Chris. 
So what exactly was the purpose of her searching Chris? We don't really know. And I seen somebody in the chat earlier say that they think that he was scoped out and picked purposely for this explosion. Um, I don't know, recruited perhaps. Um, River asked, what about the children? The children, I think, were just collateral damage because the explosion didn't take place. Alex, what do you think about that theory that the kids were not in the plan and that because the explosion didn't take place, they seen and knew too much and got disposed of? I know, Little Red, this is really confusing. <laughs> okay, so I mean, I could, I could see that. Okay, I have always wondered how does Chris go from you know, this father who's doing everything with them, watching them so Shanann can work, you know, you know, carrying all the, playing with all the kids when the friends come over and their kids come over, dressing up as Santa Claus, you know, being the the pony in the house for all the kids to ride on, that kind of stuff, right? How, did, how does he go from that to putting them in those tanks? It has never made sense to me. That's part of the reason I think that this case is like, grabbed on grabbed onto me so hard because you're like how how do you do that to these babies not to mention when you learn the size of the hole and the openings at the top of the mm -hmm. tanks and and the things like that so um I mean that's one reason where it could make sense to me you know what I mean I want I want to keep listening to you so, but yeah so I'm definitely open to it because of that because that has never made sense sense to me and then as far as this typo goes this bothers me so much because there are still people that try to say it was a typo there was and it wasn't it was not a typo you know I know that that was reported at one point however like Amber has on the screen it's been clarified it wasn't a typo why would how the hell and why was she <laughs> looking him up looking them up so, so far before this happened it doesn't make sense unless there's more to mm -hmm. the story than what they they're leading us to believe yeah and and what's weird about the misinformation about the typo and it being a typo and not is at first the the um press secretary for the frederick police i think did say it was a typo at first so then then this is the most updated statement and he's never talked on it again he's like i don't know how they got there but it's not a typo um yeah. so i just don't understand it and um, right. yeah, I, I just think that maybe the children were a part of the plan for other people. But I just I like you said, like, how do we see all these videos of him? And, and again, he's very detached, too. So that's the other thing is like when he's, you know, describing that they are in the oil and all this stuff, like you don't really see like much emotion from him. So it's hard to argue that you know, he didn't plan on them dying, but I just really feel like with all my research um, that it was collateral damage. Um, there was something else I wanted to say mm. too, but I can't remember. Let me just keep playing this because we're only like knee deep. Okay. <laughs> and, <Okay. laughs> and possibly Jim and some coworkers, I believe are behind this plan. Mostly the coworkers who are lying in their police interviews. So I don't know how familiar you are with Troy McCoy's lies in his police interview, but he is a coworker. This is his text exchange with Chris um, months before the murders. He is sending Chris an oil tank explosion article from Kansas. Um, again, these oil tanks are very dangerous. There's more than just this explosion and, and the house explosion that had taken place. Um, it's just, oh, hello, Roxanne. Good to see you. It's just something that you kind of just have to fall in the rabbit hole of looking up oil tank explosions. And you'll see how, you know, this could have been set up and it would have looked totally like, oh, well, we do know that Anna Darko wasn't following safety protocols, you know, so it just would have aligned perfectly. Um, Troy McCoy was also at the crime scene before the bodies were found, too. I don't know if you know that. No, I didn't. And I did not know that he sent this explosion article. Like, I know some of the stuff with him and I watched the interview way back in the day. Like, but um, isn't he the one with the uh, the fire stick thing? Yeah. 
or no? So, okay, yeah. yeah, he's he's the friend who he met in a grocery store parking lot to exchange a fire stick, which I think has something to do with the explosion. It's not a fire stick. Um, again, that's just a, a theory and opinion. I don't have proof, but they never took a fire stick into evidence. Uh, I do know that. And um, <clears throat> so Troy McCoy knew all about the explosion or the, yeah, he knew about the house explosion. He mentions it in his um, police interview. He um, had to be re-interviewed because he didn't mention that he had gone to the crime scene before the bodies were found. So what I mean by that is he was interviewed about Watts and everything that happened at work together on Monday. And then he goes to Survey 319 on Tuesday. Now, mind you, the district attorney has told us that the bodies were out there Monday morning. So Troy is out there on Tuesday. The water truck guy is there. He's scheduled to go there. Um, yeah, Frank Sr. says he has the fire stick. So obviously it wasn't evidence. Um, and who knows what exactly which fire stick he has. Who knows? Um, so Troy goes to Survey 319 while the body is there in the shallow grave. And the children are in the tanks, allegedly. I say allegedly because we don't have a time of death for anybody. And I'm just going off of district attorney's um, theory. So he's there. The, the water truck guy is pulling water out of the tank. And he sees Troy parked in an unusual spot. And he writes in his interview that he thought he's never seen an oil worker park where he was. Troy is parked right next to Shanann's grave blocking um, Shanann's grave from like where the water truck guy is like at the tank. So if the water truck guy is looking over in that direction, he can't see this grave because Troy's truck is purposely parked there. And he thought that was unusual. So Troy tells the water truck guy that he's out there looking for a wrench that he dropped. And the cop says, why did you tell him you were looking for a wrench? And he said um, something along the lines Okay, so he told the water truck guy he was looking for a wrench. And really, he said he was out there trying to look for clues to help the investigation and try to help find anything suspicious. And um, the cops are saying, like, you know, like, you know, why were you out there, you know, trying to f or look for anything suspicious? Um, and he, you know, instead of telling the water truck guy, like, Hey, did you hear about this missing mom and kids? Cause at this point they, we don't know that they're dead. Instead of saying I'm out here looking for, for things because my coworkers wrapped up in this, um, his wife's missing, blah, blah, blah. He lies to the water truck guy and says he's looking for a wrench. So it just makes no sense. Um, even the police yeah. are kind of like, huh, like this is interesting. But at that point, when he's re-interviewed, Chris had already confessed. So they don't really dig much deeper into it. But he lied. He lied to the water truck guy. Um, the cops called Troy's voicemail and said, hey, like, we want to talk to you. And he ignores the voicemail and then goes to the crime scene and is snooping around. So then he what? calls them back. Wow. Yeah. So it's like if if he was out there to look and help the investigation, why are you not calling back the cops who are leaving you voicemails wanting to speak to you again? So it's just a yeah. lot of weird. Things. And if you're out there like looking closer or whatever, then like how hard, I don't know the fact that he overlooked Shanann's grave and parked right, you know, if you say he parked right by it, that makes no sense either. Mm-hmm. And he said he was out there looking, you know, for that. Um, we do know that they found a rake. And the rake handle was like standing up in the ground near uh, this part here I wanted to show you. McCoy said he didn't initially think this was unusual. But after all the media attention this case has received, he got to thinking that Watts may have buried some evidence out at the tanks when he claimed to have done defecated. So we do know that Chris took a poop out there. Um, but here he, you know, Troy is saying in his interviews that he thought that 
Chris had buried some evidence out there. So again, it's just, it's weird because he starts off with saying here, like he, McCoy said he did not think this was unusual for Watts to volunteer to go to fix the by bypass line. McCoy said he didn't notice anything unusual about Watts. And then later he says, you know, with all the media attention he received, he thought maybe Watts buried some evidence. It's just everything Troy says is wishy-washy. Um, we don't right. have much time to get into it tonight, but take my word for it. There's something with Troy McCoy and this text message to him. Well, I would love to go back, like watch his interview again after talking about this or something, like go over yeah. the highlights. That would be, yeah. Yeah, we, we definitely will. Um, and that's what Florida Bass has been wanting. He's like, let's get into Troy, blah, blah. I'm like, we will, we will. We got to like build up to it. <laughs> Troy was there for reason and all of the places he was where everyone was buried before Watts even confessed to anything. So how is he not seeing the rake head that is standing up next to the grave if he's out there before the bodies are found? You know what I mean? Yeah. Or the sheet. Yeah. Like the <clears throat> wasn't. Man. Exactly. How, how is he not seeing any of this? He's saying that he's out there looking for evidence. Okay, so you just wasted everyone's time because you could have noticed all this stuff on Tuesday. Cops didn't notice this stuff until days later. So this is where it kind of talks about the rake. Hair samples from the thief hatch on top of oil, battery, parts of rake, and a bed sheet, and other things had been collected. So this is what annoys me. Like, what is this other things? kind of vague. And then it says a piece of a rake was found. The rake piece was given to Detective Baumhover. They collected the sheet, black trash bags, a rake head that was found stuck in the ground on the north edge of the disturbed dirt, and a wooden handle apparently belonging to the rake head that was found in the brush to the east of the area of disturbed dirt. So disturbed dirt is where Shanann's buried. On the north edge of the excavated plot was a rusted rake head. The rake had been placed with the handle attachment portion buried into the ground. To the east of the plot was a wooden tool handle as well as a piece of metal that was consistent with connecting a rake head to the rake handle. During the search, a possible portion of the rake was located. And then this is like an evidence list and it has the rake listed in there as well as all this other stuff. Um, the the black trash bags. Um, so that's why I posed the question now that we know more, you know, in the Idaho case about touch DNA, um, why didn't, you know, I, I obviously the, in the investigation ended before, um, they could run analysis on labs and stuff like that. But looking back at everything we know about touch DNA now, what, whose touch DNA was on that rake? You know, right? Oh my gosh, that's so interesting. I didn't even. I guess I never even knew that there was the top of a rake. Like, I I'm wondering, did it break whenever they were uh, burying Shanann, and then they just like throw the handle and leave the like? That's pretty sloppy to do. I don't know. Right. I know, and and no one ever really talks about the the um the rake, and it's hard to find um articles and images of it. This is true crime rocket science. He did a lot of like really good work um, in the very beginning. This shows you like the roads going out to survey. Um, and this is one of the only pictures of the rake that I've seen out there. Like I know that people have screenshot it and, you know, saved it in Facebook groups and stuff, but um, there's the shallow grave. I'm just looking for the rake one right now. Hold on. Yeah. This, I mean, and you know what, too? Oh, they right. never show us what it looked like with the hand. I, I have never seen the rake handle picture. Has anyone else? And yeah, Troy changed no, but, his word. Now, uh, um, I remember like a creator, like kind of spreading rumors about the rake handle or something back now that I think about it, like something clicks with that, but it wasn't anything based on fact and it, or anything, but I do remember that. That's all I remember about the rake at all. 
Yeah. And, and Christina said, I heard the rake was at the house and then the next police footage gone or was at the shovel. So there is a rake in Watts's garage. You can see it hanging. So this is not that rake. His rake looked less rusty. Um, but again, it just comes down to the, the handle. No one has ever seen. Apparently it was sticking into the ground. Um, I would love to see an image of that. And I would love to know who's touched DNAs on that because you know how sweaty anybody would be, be digging this hole and raking like the, the ground over it. Oh, yeah. There's definitely touch DNA on that rake handle. Yeah, I agree. Fingerprints, anything, you know. And I've never heard them ask Chris about a, a rake. I've heard them speak about a shovel and Troy purposely places both their hands on the shovel. And what I mean by that is apparently he says in his interview before they left the site, they had to cover up the oil leak because if OSHA showed up, they could get in a lot of trouble. So he took the shovel out of Chris's hand and covered up the leak in the ground. So purposely oh. placing his own, you know, fingerprints, touch DNA on a shovel that both he and Chris have used. When you listen to the interview, which we'll get there someday, guys, um, it's just very odd, you know, and so now I'm just left with the question of, yeah, exactly. Um, Marshall Dove says, please. Right. This case mm -hmm. is so bad. I remember the shovel went missing from the work truck. And then the guy said he was seen walking behind the house, carrying a pole of some kind. Yeah, that is an interesting image. Have you seen that? There's like somebody walking around their neighborhood and it looks like he's like got a shovel. It's in like mm -hmm. the body. I don't know like, that I've seen that. Mm -mm. But again, it doesn't really answer, like mm -hmm. the rake mystery. You know, where is the photos of this um, handle? Where is the touch DNA? Like, obviously, all that got halted. Yeah. Which is really unfortunate. That should never happen. You stop investigating a case because someone confesses. We know how often false confessions happen. And speaking of that, Little Red had put in the chat, didn't um, he admit to killing his children? And he did. But here's the thing. Well, actually, he didn't admit it to the police. He, um, Even though the police went out the next day and said that he did, he actually only admitted to killing Janan. Later, he admits it to the police in an interview in a whole nother version of events. But then he does another version of events to an author in a written letter mm -hmm. that he wrote. So there's there's so many different versions of him confessing and not confessing that. I mean, which one is true? Right. And he only confesses to, you know, oh, yes, I killed the kids. That was after he's already been in prison. Before, uh, before yep. he was in prison, he said Shanann killed the kids. Um, and then he's made yep. to sign the plea deal, which admits to killing all of them so that they would take death penalty off the table. So he signs it. But up until the plea deal, he said over and over in his police interview, I did not hurt those kids. I did not hurt my kids. I did not hurt those babies. Um, and then they blame Shanann for it. And he agrees with that. TBI or CBI came out with the idea that Shanann killed them. He jumped on board with it. Yes, I know it's a technique that law enforcement uses. Yes, I know it can be beneficial, but it does have a lot of problems. And this case is a prime example of a false confession. And we still just don't know, you know, where the truth lies as far as the deaths of the children. Chris absolutely is where he needs to be. And he definitely has, you know, a hand in all this. Um, and he's the reason why the kids are dead. But I just don't think that he killed them himself. Yeah, he also he was never directly asked during the polygraph if he killed the girls worded differently. I, I believe that bothers me. Yes. And I have a federal law enforcement um, agent that I've asked. Does that matter that they weren't asked specifically about the children in the polygraph? And he says, yes, that absolutely matters. So I know people tried to say, well, um, he before he takes the poly, he asks Shanann or he asked Tammy, 
uh, are you including the children? And she says, any question I ask, you can just assume that they're involved or that I'm asking about them, something along that. And it's like, but when the test starts and she, she starts the polygraph, she purposely doesn't ask about the children and that matters. Um, yeah. All right. I for an eye says, I found something no one has found. Share it. We'd love to hear it. Okay, hold on. Let me get back to this. I didn't even have CC tours who were lying in their police interviews. Survey 319 was not in compliance with safety regulations, and it didn't even have CCTV cameras as it was expected to have them and told to have them. The plan was to have an explosion and make the murder look like an accident and walk away with millions in insurance money and to sue Anna Darko like the house explosion family did, making millions off a wrongful death lawsuit. Perhaps they would drive Shanann's SUV out there to make it look like Shanann wanted to look for Chris, maybe to confront him about the affair. Another theory is the new work boots that were found in the car area of the Lexus. Perhaps Shanann was to bring them to Chris because Chris had mentioned in interviews that he likes to carry extra clothing in case he spills oil on himself because he had done it in the past and had headaches for weeks. Okay, so I want to kind of dig into that a little bit more because a lot of people wonder like with the explosion theory, like why would Shanann be out there, you know? Um, and it wasn't until the recent like digging into what fracking is and, you know, how that house that exploded, it wasn't like you saw an oil tank next to it, right? The oil tank is far enough away where it doesn't need to be right next to you for this explosion to take place. So in my opinion, I think that, um, I think that, she was supposed to kind of, I, I, I don't know, somehow, remember, they couldn't get into her phone because she had just changed her password over the weekend. So the fact that they couldn't pose as Shanann on her phone, I think kind of leads to the plan kind of falling apart for this explosion, even before Nicole Atkinson doesn't show up. You know, they're having a problem getting into her phone and staging a conversation between Chris and her, in my opinion. And I think that that conversation was either going to be she confronts him about an affair, maybe, and she's upset. So she wants to drive out to see him and talk to him. Or for some reason, in the cargo area of the Lexus, under like the cargo area is in the trunk, um, and you can open up the floor, and that's like a secret compartment in some SUVs. Um, his new work boots were in there. So for whatever reason, he buys new work boots. He's not wearing them and they're in the Lexus. So was he going to text her and say, I'm out here at work. I just spilled oil on me. And the reason why I'm coming up with this theory is he straight up tells Tammy that he spilled oil on himself before and he had a headache for weeks because of it. So he likes to carry like extra clothing in his work truck, et cetera. So I was thinking maybe it was supposed to be staged that he would text Shanann and say, you know, can you drive out to this road? Um, I spilled oil and the, the work boots are in the truck. And of course, it wouldn't be Shanann responding the text. It would be somebody, an accomplice posing as Shanann saying like, yes, I'll meet you out there. Or they're having an argument and... Um, she says, I need to speak to you. Like, I know you're cheating on me. Where are you? And she drives out there. Either way, I think there was supposed to be some sort of staged conversation between the two. But the fact that she had just changed her um, passcode to her phone, I think that kind of started falling apart. Um, let me just show you. What do you think about that so far? <clears throat> I think that it is interesting that her password just changed that weekend. And also, I had a thought that I meant to say when we were chatting just a second ago uh, that I wanted to tell you so about the investigation stopping like it did. Um, it's just weird because if we look at other cases, like even in the same general time frame, like Lori Vallow with um, 
how they found the kids. I mean, they pinged Alex's phone to the exact people always say a phone ping doesn't mean anything it just means like general location within miles yes certain ones but the FBI has the capability of pinging you like almost exactly to the spot where you stand and as a matter of fact if you get out and open your google maps and even just look at it and spin in a circle you will literally see like the direction of your phone spin in a circle exactly where you're at but the FBI was able to ping Alex to the exact spot in Chad's yard, which was just like a big field. So the capabilities that they have, the, the, they could have proven or disproven so much with this that was never done. And it just, I'm sorry, but you don't stop just because somebody, I mean, I guess it, a confession is different than a plea, right? Because if they just confess like Chad Doerman, but he's still pleading not guilty, they still have to prove their case and it's possible they got lazy and thought hell we don't have to prove our case anymore but there are other reasons too why they may have not wanted to prove the case and that's where I get with you with like the political and the money ties and stuff and we can get into that but yeah so it's just interesting to think about all the capabilities how much they could actually prove Mm -hmm. that was never done right and and um what is the the FBI team that does the phone. It's like on the tip of my tongue. I can't even think of the cast. like special group cast. Yes. That's what it yes. is. Mm-hmm. Cast would have had no problem digging up her, um, Nicole Kessinger's deleted text messages, all that. I mean, we have seen that the case now, Madeline Soto, he factory reset his phone and they were still able to recover evidence on it. You know, even after he thought probably like once I factory said it, like they're not going to be able to find anything, you know, and it's it's just so frustrating in this case to know that like stuff was deleted by the mistress, an outlier of this family who cyber stalked them before she ever even worked with them, you know, so it's just so many things that just frustrate me. Um, So Angie says those oil lines go for miles underground. Yes. So that's what I was trying to show on with that one article with the rancher. Um, He was all about like, yeah, I'll work with oil companies and and more people should be willing to do this work alongside of them. This is all before, you know, the, the, his water got contaminated with oil and he realized that these companies aren't even maintaining these oil lines. And this was a huge mistake. I'm sure he realized. Um, But here, this is what drives me nuts is look at this image. I, I saw this when I was editing my documentary, which was like over a year ago at this point. I and mean, I'm like, why the heck are they digging up a ground? You know, they already know where the shallow grave is at this point. They already know the children are in the tanks at this point because this report is, you know, a few days after um, he's arrested and it talks about how they had located the bodies So they, for some reason, the media is in a helicopter filming um, this angle and it has nothing to do with Survey 319 in the tanks, right? Look, it's CBS Philadelphia, zero likes on this. This was posted five years ago, 434 views, zero comments. And for those who don't know, like likes and comments push a video out there into the algorithm. So this never really got, has anyone else seen this? Have you seen like this image in relation to the Watts case? No, no, absolutely not. That's crazy. I was, it only has that many views, five years. Yeah. A Chris Watts video with only not even a thousand views, zero likes. Like this like leads me to think that there is like something bigger kind of suppressing certain things in this case. And I think that this image that the media took like this to me backs up my theory that there was an oil. We already know that the well, the oil well was leaking from survey 319. This looks like to me, they were trying to fix the pipeline, you know, right away. Cause these are oil company um, trucks. You can um, I've compared them to other articles, not related to Watts, but related to oil companies And this is like their maintenance crew. You can see they're like standing back. They got like the cone set up. Um, And when we looked at the drone footage of Survey, like these these, um, trucks, like Chris's truck, 
you know, starts going off into like the, the areas, the ranch areas from this main road. So when I say I think that Shanann was supposed to be, you know, driving out there, I don't mean literally right in front of the tank. I mean, she might have been driving out like on a road like this and Chris comes to meet her and the pipe is filling the air. It's it's toxic. Um, so I don't know how exactly this whole thing was supposed to happen, but I think that this kind of shows and I slowed it down. So let me just play it. Um, I think that this kind of leads to that oil leak being a real issue that they took care of, like as they were pulling the bodies out, there was another crew and me and media like following this situation. I'm just going to play that. It's very quick, but you know, what exactly are they looking for when we know the bodies are not here? You know, so it's just kind of like puzzling to me. Justice A to Z says, wait, what? Yeah. And then here you can see, hold on, let me pause it. You know, this to me is like a main road. And in my theory, this would be maybe the road that Chris would drive to meet Shanann at, you know, in their confrontation or you know, her to bring him the new work boots so he can get the other ones off. And then that's when this explosion would take place. Um, so I don't know. I, I don't know what to make of this image for those who are not on board with um, the explosion theory. That's fine. But can you explain to me what you think this is about? Yeah, that's a good question. Well, what if, is it, so they are that's at survey right there where exactly is that at? and is it possible it's something else that's the thing is like i don't have like the coordinates for this i just know that this is a um a news um segment about the case like if i if i play it at regular speed like you'll hear them just talking about the case regular stuff you know um, and for some reason, they're showing this image. The girls' bodies were found inside storage tanks filled with crude oil on property owned by the company where Watts worked. Then it starts mm. getting into how his defense team wants swabs done on their necks because Chris told them that they were strangled by Shanann. They weren't strangled for one. They were smothered. So he even has the way that they died wrong in his first confession. Um, and then the defense team was denied that. So they weren't allowed to even swab the necks. And some people have said, well, how can they get DNA when it's in the oil? Then I read an article from a, an expert that the defense was going to call and use who says that you can absolutely still get touch DNA even after in the oil. So it would have been one of those things at trial where they would have pulled both their, well, this is weird how I paused it. Um, how, where they would have pulled both expert mm -hmm. opinions and, um, you know, one side would have given their ex expert opinion and the other side, but DNA doesn't lie. So was there going to be DNA on their necks that didn't match Chris? You know, we just don't know. I mean, they weren't even strangled. So why would there be D DNA on their necks? I mean, I guess Bella fought back. So there could possibly be DNA even on her face or something, but we just never got that answer. So I'm just going to play this in slow oh motion God. again. Okay. I don't know um, in relation to Survey 319 where exactly this road is, but I have a feeling that this is showing the main road that kind of leads you to where those um, sites go. So what do you think? Wow. Um, I think it's super interesting. I don't know, man. I do not know. And also I think, my God, those kids, I just – and Shanann, my heart freaking breaks for what they went through. And and just knowing that Bella fought back, knowing about the injuries in her mouth and, you know, that stuff. And, it, yeah, just really hor horrible. I know. It, it drives me nuts. And, like, it's just one of those things where, like, with so many other cases we cover, we – kind of get closure at times with them. You know what I mean? Like, of course, they're hard to talk about and cover. Like, 
Kayla Montgomery, you and I talked behind the scenes, like that kind of wore me out. Like yeah. that knowing, you know, the, yeah. the things that was done to that girl, like it, it really wore on me. That's how I feel about the Watts case. But unfortunately, without the trial and and real evidence as far as, you know, his phone, we don't have much of his phone. We don't have the security system um, data for the house. We don't have uh, DNA and all that. Like all that could exclude other people besides Chris. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's really unfortunate that they're, that at least, I don't know. I just wish that they would have finished the investigation. Um, it just sucks because it, you just left like, what if, what, and this is the thing. Let me say something. Cause someone was in the chat trying to say, the family has wanted this to stop. No, the family wanted people to stop blaming Shanann and demonizing her. What Amber is doing here and what I'm doing here, but specifically Amber is very different than that. She is very passionate about if anyone else is to blame, she wants Chris to stay where he's at. But if anyone else had any part in it, they should also have to pay for that. That is it. And that's, you know what I mean? Out of just like love and care and support or whatever towards the, the victims. Um, and I agree with that. I think if, if anybody else was involved, they should also be in jail. <laughs> yeah. And last I knew the family said, as long as you source the discovery files, that they didn't mind if you discuss the case. Yeah, that's what, that's it. They did. They don't, they don't mind that. They know people are going to talk. That's what the last time I'd heard about it. And this was a while ago that they don't, you know, it's the, the conspiracies about Shanann doing it and blaming Shanann and, you know, the channel that was out there doing reenactments of how Shanann did it. And, and those kinds of things that was horrific, not just um, looking at the actual facts of the case and just, the, you know, discussing it so I just yeah. didn't say that but and I feel like those people in chat must have me blocked or something because I have not seen and my mod Johnny says something last time like oh yeah these people just keep coming in chat telling us we can't talk about the case I'm like really I don't see so they're blocking me but then blowing up my chat saying not to talk about this it's like you're not I'm the type of person yeah, that's ridiculous. tell me not to do something I'm probably going to double down <laughs> so I just <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what they're well, trying no, to do. That, that's, that's ridiculous. I've only seen like one or two comments about that, but I just wanted to say, because you, you do hear people say that about, that. well, for one, people are going to talk about cases forever. People are still talking about Ted Bundy. I would love to do a deep dive into that. But, mm -hmm. that is, but my, uh, you know, I think that it's, it's just, that's just the way that it is with people who are truly interested in true crime. Take that to another level when you have people who are passionate for the victims getting justice and they truly don't believe that's happened. And when like, cause that's even where I'm at, at least to, at the very least, I believe Nicole Kessinger was involved more than what um, we've heard. And I think that's wrong. That's somebody, you know, mm -hmm. that's wrong. So why yeah. should you not talk about that? And that's, yeah, exactly. And the thing is, too, people have asked even in chat, like now, like, so if Chris didn't kill the kids, who did? I can't come on here and say who killed them because I don't know. Um, my gut doesn't really flow towards NK or, you know, leave Jim alone or I just don't know. Um, I wouldn't put it past anybody who's not related to children to hurt kids because we've seen it in so many cases where people outliers hurt children and they just, you know, it's easier for them um, because they're not their own kids. I, I can't come on here and, and say like NK did this and because I just don't know. So I'm not going to come out here and act like I do know. But like you said, I just there's something about her that it, it's seeming like there's there's more involvement. And over the years, it seems like more people feel that way. Mm -hmm. I and agree. when people say like it was NK, like I don't I don't silence them. I don't tell them you don't know that. So don't say that. Like you're more than welcome to tell me how you feel, because this case is such a, um, a puzzle that. I don't know. I'll take anybody else's consideration and feelings towards it and, and kind of keep it on my like, um, 
investigation yeah. board. Like, oh, that's interesting. Maybe I should look into that. And thank you, Doug, for becoming a member. Um, Just Doug is um, no thanks in case anybody wants to join his channel. It's called Just Doug now. So he's covering oh, okay. Summer Wells and keeping her name out there, which, you know, that is another rabbit hole that you and I have covered too. Mm -hmm. And talked about together. I know. And it's, we got to do I something wish. for the, the anniversary of her going missing, but. Yeah. I wish that she would be found. I just cannot believe. I hope and pray that it happens one day soon. I don't know how like kids do not vanish. You know, so I know it, it's it. such a rabbit hole. That's another one that I kind of had to step away from from for a while because it was just kind of wearing at me. Yeah. Well, then, what do you think? Just like really quickly, I know this is lots, but just one question: Kayla got parole today. Mm -hmm. What do you think about I that? Her life. Uh, <sighs> I understand that she gave a, a very powerful testimony to get Adam convicted, but I just feel like she doesn't deserve freedom. <laughs> like I know that getting him, you know, convicted for it is great. And I know that that's the state's objective. Like, well, at least we got him put away for this crime. And it's like, yeah, but right. it just seemed like she was so hands-on with, you know, disposing of her and, everything like she openly admitted to you know cutting her clothing off and all this stuff like when she was deceased i'm just like why is this girl out i'm and i still feel the same way like last year they paroled um one of the manston women and she's out i'm like yeah. how do you partake in those horrific crimes um sharon tate pregnant killed and they're paroled I don't understand it. it. It, I just really, it really bothers me, honestly. Yeah, I, I don't like it either. It's just, I don't know. It's, it's like, should we be like bargaining and making deals with people who take the most like precious, valuable thing on this earth to us, our kids, right? Like that's the, like for me, that's the most precious thing on earth. I don't want to bargain or give people deals or cut them slack when they are any part of removing them from this earth. That's just I know. And yes, thank you. Les Leslie Van Houten. Um, and thank you, Cher, for the super sticker. Yeah. And, and you know, the Manson murders were horrible, but add in the fact that Sharon was pregnant and then they parole her. Yeah. Like it wasn't like she just yeah. killed a, uh, 20 I think she was 23 very um young it wasn't like she just killed Sharon you know like there's there was yeah. something else to that and it's like how can you just let her out um I just don't think that she yeah. spent enough time in there and it's just frustrating well some states if you kill a pregnant woman that you get the death penalty and everyone involved like it will get the death penalty if it's felony murder. That's that, you know, that's not completely unheard of. Um, if you kill a pregnant woman, so California mm. is just a little more lenient. Yeah. Maybe yeah. that's what I think, but I think so too, especially over the years. All right, let's get mm -hmm. back to this. It's only a couple more minutes long and then we can kind of okay. talk a little bit. Okay. supposed to make it seem like he needed those boots brought out again the thing about this plan is she doesn't need to be at the tanks for this fracking accident to take place the fracking pipes run underneath the ground at survey ranch and they had the same cracks in it as the ones did next to the house explosion the house explosion was not near the well or the tank it was just near a leaking underground pipe that was filling their basement so this is just um, that same kind of clip, uh, different angle from my documentary. So that's why it has like the images on it. But again, I, I seen somebody say something like this was filmed uh, before they knew where they were. I don't see anything that says the date on when this was filmed. And even if they were looking for them at the time, that's why they're digging here. I don't see why they would have all this like caution stuff. 
Um, to me, it looks like they're being cautious because of an oil leak. Um, the company with the cones, it, this doesn't look like a law enforcement like thing like, oh, let's look well, for them here. Yeah, and they don't typically dig for no reason, right? Like I have seen them dig and find nothing. We saw it with Michael Vaughn, but they believe there was a, at one point um, decomposition there. We saw it with um, Barry Morphy, but usually there's a reason why they dig in a particular place, whether it's dirt that's upturned, not just like right by the road. Like, I don't know. I, it, it, to me, it doesn't look like, I don't know. It does look more like work, but I could be wrong. Yeah, I feel like there would like, be law enforcement on scene if this had to do with like, oh, let's look for the victims here. And why, you know, I don't know. I think this has to do with the yeah. oil leak personally. Yeah. And again, this this gift card um, on the screen, this was a company given gift card that Nicole Kessinger was in charge of handing out. So if you followed, you know, good safety protocols, she was somebody who monitored all that and was able to reward the employees with a gift card um, for being good and cautious and, you know, checking the oil monitors and the gas meters or whatever. Um, so I just think it's interesting that we have like a visual of one of the gift cards because it's mentioned a few times in the case, the gift cards, and, you know, it just kind of shows NK's involvement with, you know, the safety protocols. And, you know, obviously she was favoritism, uh, there was favoritism towards Watts. But, you know, it's, it's just another aspect of her kind of being hands on um, in the short time that she worked with him. The plan started to fall apart as soon as Shanann's flight was delayed by three hours. Shanann changed her iPhone password so Chris and the accomplices couldn't log in and tell her friends that everything was okay and to keep Nicole Atkinson away from coming to the house on Monday looking for her. Then Nicole Atkinson shows up with law enforcement and the explosion never happens. We know that Nicole so the explosion never happens. And also you see in the body cam footage that we've gone through, like we've paused it um, in past episodes where, where Chris says, like, should I just should I go out there and look for them? Um, and then I earlier in the stream, I read from the discovery, Sandy Rusek saying it, he's telling people that he needs to go back to work, um, you know, and that's odd. And, and she took it as that he was going to hide evidence or pour oil on the bodies. You know, that's her interpretation of it. People can agree with that. Like, yeah, you know, that could be a valid reason why he wanted to go back there. And, you know, it could be maybe he wanted for those who think, you know, he put the sheet out there. Maybe he was thinking, I got to get back there and kind of pick up like what I've left there. Um, but I don't think that I really think that he needed to get back to complete this plan, in my opinion. Um, and Ontario, mm -hmm. that, yeah, the. She said, I think the leak was definitely part of the plan in the explosion, leaving the leak all weekend and possibly Shanann lookalike driving the Lexus to the site. And then they would stage the explosion and it would be blamed on safety violations, which they had a paper trail of. Um, I don't know the logistics of how exactly it would have happened, but it just seems like this oil leak um, has more to do with things, I think. Well, I love that you like point out, um, okay, so if you think it was Chris and he, that he maybe he was trying to get back there to clean up because he knew he left things, you know, out. And that, because I think that could be valid too, but it's, it's when you said like, and they had a paper trail for it, it just like hit me in my gut. Like, oh, it just feels gross. Yeah, and, and you know, I just feel like, Nicole Atkinson was waiting at the house for a while. Like when she contacted him, I think it was close to an hour. It does take a while to drive from Servi to his house, like 45 minutes or something. But it, it seemed like, you know, he was kind of taking his time. And if he was going to take his time, why not just get rid of all the stuff instead of leaving it out there? You know what I mean? Like, it wasn't yeah. like he got interrupted at work and called from work and he went rushing home. He took his time. They were saying, they mentioned it like numerous times. Like, I, 
I, Nicole Atkinson, I called him and, but he's not here yet. Um, and then he finally shows up. He's wearing a different outfit than what he had left in and what Troy McCoy describes him wearing. Um, so all this stuff he did potentially like change before he gets home. Why would he leave all that stuff out there? You know, why not just dump it? Cause yeah. many people say like he threw out the children's stuffed animals at the dumpster on the way home. We don't know that for certain, but it's a very popular theory. So then why wouldn't he just throw out the sheet and stuff? You know what I mean? There's just no reason for all that to kind of be left there, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. It's it's definitely sloppy, but I mean, I don't know. I guess the other theory goes with him being rushed too. So, mm. or not rushed, but you know, not having not planned. Some people think that he just freaked out and that's why, because it truly doesn't make any sense the way that they were all disposed of. Mm-hmm. I know. Why not just throw the children in the in the shallow grave? Yeah. I just don't understand that. Um, and then for those who think that Shin or that Chris told them where the bodies were, I mean, I I'm sorry to break it to you, but right here in the discovery, this is the day after he confess confesses and they're out at the site. Um I later received information from AIC Lewis that Chris Watts had marked a copy of a photograph of the area previously taken by the drone with locations of the bodies. Chris indicated that Shanann was buried in the area of disturbed dirt we had previously located. So remember when he's in his interrogation and they hand him the photo of Servi the drone picture, and they say, you know, mm -hmm. where is everybody? Um, not mm -hmm. only does he ask when the photo was taken, which is weird, he takes a minute to find Shanann. So he's kind of skimming the page. Like, if you did it yourself, like, don't you know? She's right here. So we'll have to watch that eventually, too. But many people think that Shanann got blamed with the read technique because they needed Chris to tell them where the bodies were. But here in the discovery, it basically throws that theory, you know, out the window because it says previously located. So disturbed dirt that we had previously located. Of course, they found her um, body before Chris labeled it because remember in the drone footage, they're zooming in right over her grave. I haven't seen that drone footage in so long, but uh, now you make me want to watch it again. But what stands out to me is being being so obvious what was there but because of yeah. the way it was filmed and the sheet and you know and um justice wants you to comment on something which i would love to just if you don't mind really quickly about the the lucky charms the text okay. that um because i don't even remember exactly what it was that she sent him yeah can you but, talk about the text. lucky charms please okay so uh, so he is in Nate's house texting. We see him on the body cam footage and he's texting. I'm trying to see if I have a copy of the text message too. Um, that she yes. said was about he the serial. He is on body cam. Yes. So he's texting, um, in what little text messages we have of NK and Chris that they recovered. One of them is from Chris to her and it's time stamped at a time that you know he was in Nate's house. So not only do we see him texting on Nate's, but in the time stamp in the text, it shows that that was the time that he was at um, in Nate's house. Let me see. Okay. Yeah, here it is. So at 2.44 PM, it's kind of blurry. We've talked about it in the past. Chris says to Nicole Kessinger, oh, my God, that is absolutely ridiculous. With three exclamation points, they would freak out with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten exclamation points after freak out. Um, so we never heard Chris explain. They never asked Chris what was that about, which is, you know, red flag number one. I'd love to hear his viewpoint on it. And two, they asked um, Nicole Kessinger what it was about. And she said, 
oh, I was at a grocery store, which I thought she was at work at 2.44. Either way, she's talking about how she had seen Lucky Charms cereal unicorn edition and she thought the kids would love it. And that was Chris's mm -hmm. response, which I just think is bullshit. Well, I don't know about you. In Nate's house watching this, yeah. knowing that they have footage of him, you know, after the murders, moving Shanann in the truck, which some people don't believe that's what he was doing, whatever. But on that footage, and he's pacing back and forth watching himself, he's texting that about cereal. No. Yeah. And remember, that's he's weird. got like his hands up like this, and he's just like mm -hmm. ready to faint. She's texting him about cereal. Right. Right. Yeah, exactly. It's like, just yeah, that'd be fun. ridiculous. Why is cereal yeah. ridiculous too? I've always said I always remember thinking that like ridiculous. That's such an odd way to describe like a picture of cereal. You think your kids would like like oh that's ridiculous. <laughs> like I don't know. It just doesn't feel natural at all. And if you look at what little text messages we do have of Chris, I mean he's never really using exclamation points like that. Like this was like something that he was like, you know, when you use exclamation points for something was got got him like in that type of mentality. Um, so this article is an old one. I wanted to play this because it's been a while since I've seen this viewpoint of the tanks. But there was something in this article that also stated that when they looked in the oil tanks, they could see um, the bodies. So I know people thought oh, well, they couldn't see the girls. They needed Chris to label them. Um, this says something along the lines of like, they could see them looking in the tanks. So let me just find that part. Because I just think it's important to kind of um, point out these things because people just think that that's why Shanann got blamed in the interrogation because they didn't know where they were. And it's like, they knew. They knew where Shanann was like, um, stated in the discovery files and they knew according to this um, where the girls were um, and um, can I ask you at that mm -hmm. at that time um, when when did Nicole find out that Shanann and the girls were missing um, I think she says like around three like she she says that he called her and said my family's missing and she was like what like kind of like surprised and she's like what do you mean so I think it was like she claims it was like around three like as she was leaving or something that I'll have to go back over and, and get you a more accurate timeline for that okay but I want to yeah. say it was like she leaves work, gets home, and, and receives a call from him that his family's missing. So, like, right before the text? Or right after the text? Yeah. The cereal? Okay, yeah. Lily Rose, this sounds more accurate. NK says she found out when she got home from work around 345. So, she leaves work at 3, takes around 45 minutes to get home, she says. And then that's when they speak, and he says, my family's missing. And she's like, what? What do you mean? which I don't believe. I think she knew. <laughs> I think she knew right away. I think she was telling him, take the ring out of the oh. Lexus, um, put it up on the nightstand, make it look like Shanann left all upset. You know what I mean? Like she, he was getting instructions through his phone while he's on body camera. Why else would he not? Why else would he be on the phone with the investigators with her on three-way listening in? I'm sorry, but that just, yeah. So that makes no sense to me. I know. And yet we never get them to ask Chris, like, what's this text message about? Like, don't, shouldn't we ask the person who sent the text message what it was about? Yeah. So frustrating. So this here says, Sergeant Armstrong told me well, he could see what looked like a body face down on the south side of the tank. So they could see something when they looked in there. Then we heard that they couldn't find uh, Bella as easily and she was at the bottom. So I think that um, that whole thing is kind of wishy-washy where if they could see the girls or not. But that I thought was interesting how it said that they could see, you know, one of them looking in. 
This is interesting. I haven't seen this in years. So I hope you guys find it interesting. It's just another angle of Serbi. So I'm just going to play this a little bit. There's no sound to it. So we can just kind of observe. Okay. But... My God, it just, oh, it brings back memories of first looking at all of this and like just that horrifying feeling of knowing that those babies were in there hearing about their, you know, their bodies when they had to be pulled out. And um, oh, it's just awful. I know. I never, I didn't know anything about oil tanks and stuff, you know? So then when I'm seeing the headlines of this case, I'm like, what? You know, so confused. And then like, when I see the visual, I'm just like, wait, how the heck? You know what I mean? Because even Coder says in the interrogation, he's like, I got guys out there who are just telling me the hole is too small for them to go through. Are you sure you put them yep. in there? And he says, yes. So this eight is inches, a right. Yeah. Is it eight? Yeah. Eight inches, yeah. which is the size of a paper plate. And Chris is in there with pizza and he has a paper plate with him. And he coder points at the plate and he says like the size of this plate and chris goes no bigger and then and ultimately like no actually it is the size of that plate so why is chris describing oh, the hatch as bigger than it is you know what i mean it's just little things like that like some people will say well he was just lying yeah he could have just been lying but at that point he was already telling them where they were so why would he lie about the size of the the hatch hole you know what i mean well, I remember having to having to fact check myself on part of this recently and not being able to find, but it came up from Dr. Phil, but I couldn't find it anywhere else that she had a broken collarbone that Bella did. Yeah, I think that is right. And there was something about her jaw being broken too. Something. There was like mouth injuries and stuff. I remember some, yeah, before, but like the, the, shoulder specifically like that was the only place I could find it again was like doc something from Dr. Phil oh yeah yeah I know exactly what you're talking about he is like the only one that mentioned bones being broken and he spoke very closely to Shanann's family like they were very close um when all this went down you know and so did he get that information from them well, the, the actual full autopsies were never released, right? Right. They were never released. Yeah. Um, they've asked Chris numerous times, you know, did they go in there alive, which I don't get why they have to ask him like numerous times. It should just be, you know, one or two. So there's something to them asking him about were they alive when they went in. But then there's also something to the size of it obviously and it and not really matching like how did you get them in there you know and then dr phil mentions broken bones and it's like oh but then he never describes that mm -mm. like i feel like you really yeah. would have to maneuver them like in a way where like either a bone's broken or like joints are you know out of their socket um, her jaw, I think, had something to do with an air pocket from decomp that kind of altered it. But again, that would have to be something I look back over. But you're right. Dr. Phil's the only one who's ever mentioned breaking bones to get them in. So, yeah. I mean, that. And, okay. And was it part of. Oh, I'm sorry, Amber. Um, oh, yeah. Was that part of his deal that the autopsy wasn't going to be the full? Wasn't that part of his plea deal that. The autopsy and maybe the some of the re health records or something would never be released. Am I right? Because I like guess that's what I'm remembering, but I, I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, the whole full, like the x-rays and stuff, like from the autopsies, there's just so much that has just been um, sealed as part of his plea deal, which is like, why are we, you know, uh, I just don't get it. I really don't. They blame it on it the plea deal. <clears throat> the investigation yeah. stopped because of the plea deal and this and that because he signed the plea. It's like we sealed this and that because of the plea. It's like, how do you stop an investigation just because somebody decides to admit it? Like, doesn't things have to kind of his plea deal kind of align have to align with evidence? Yeah. 
and also what an odd request you know like to to keep that sealed why right and why would they comply uh, with that like they take the death penalty off the table because he decides to confess to it all and they don't have to go through trial and they save tax money great but why are we like allowing him to hide things like the full autopsies? Like, of course, I'm not trying to like look at pictures, you know, but for things like to know 100 percent, like, so wait, were bones broken? Like, shouldn't we be able to source that in a case? Well, it's, you know, Colorado, like they have those open records. Now they're trying to, they will maybe pass a law since Gannon's autopsy photos were released about minors autopsies and photos. But, you know, I think usually they are in Colorado. Hi, Deco, Peter and T. That's that's a good question. So this has more to do with Cadel. So Dr. Phil wasn't the one who said he used his boot to shove them in. That was something Chris told Cadel for her book, and that's his third confession. So first confession, he never mentions using a boot to get them in. Second confession in prison, he never mentions a boot to get them in. And then for whatever reason, he decides to change in his third confession with Cadel. And, and I don't believe a single word he told Cadel or that Cadel wrote, honestly. Um, but you have more like experience with Cato than than anyone, I think. Well, yeah, I don't, don't believe I don't necessarily believe anything that's her opinion, or but I do question some of the things that we know are in his handwriting. Why, like he obviously wrote it, and not that I think that it's true, but why did he say some of that stuff? Maybe some of it is true. I don't know. Um, the the letters that she actually print that you you know we got to see um i don't know what do you think about those i think that they're definitely interesting you know um there was one line he wrote in one of them that says something like if you're feeling like there's more to the story that's because there is like that to me i was like oh wow you know um but he says something to her about Shanann's eyes filled with blood at that point and then we checked the autopsy and her eyes weren't bloodshot so I just yeah. don't understand like you know why he would like change things because in the prison interview they specifically ask him if her eyes filled with blood and he says no and then they take a lunch break and they come back and he start, starts describing things again with them and he says maybe that's when her eyes filled with blood so he changes it And then what do you know, the autopsy says that they were white and that they were not bloodshot and she didn't have whatever it's called, petechia, or I can't even pronounce the Mm -hmm. medical term, but uh, um, blood vessels in your eyes pop and you get like the red eyes in your eye. Um, She didn't have that, which most, you know, strangled victims do have. Same with her hyoid bone was not broken or fractured. It was intact. So it wasn't a very like aggressive strangulation like we've seen in Gabby Petito's case in in autopsy. So it's just very strange. Um, Yeah, he is a chameleon. He was her. Oh, I'm sorry. Was Gabby's broken? Yeah, hers. And it specifically says um, death by strangulation throttling. And so the throttling is like that, like aggressive, like she, you know, it was a very brutal. Um, and you could see like oh in her God. autopsy, the neck injuries, but then in, um, in whatchamacallit, Shanann's, it, it wasn't there as far as the neck injuries. She had bruising and there was bruising on like the muscle and stuff in the neck, but her thyroid um, cartilage and her hyoid bone were all intact. So it's just very that is strange. So interesting. It's weird because it's weird to look at the differences and why, but we know that Brian and Gabby had this volatile, emotional, like, and even though he claims that he was, he was like um, putting her out of her, her misery, like why not get, get her help? I don't, that's just the most ridiculous story ever that he wrote in the journal. We know that he was very aggressive and they were, he was violent right and Mm -hmm. but Chris if it if it was you know Chris 
when he killed Shanann, and and I believe that he did, but I know that you know theories are all over. Why wasn't his aggressive like that? Did he not have that rage, that anger, that emotional? Um, I don't know. I think it's that it's because she, but... she was sedated. I think so. She's knocked out where she's not fighting. But, you know, they don't, you don't require like that much. The other thing too, that's different in Gabby's and hers is um, Gabby's, she, you know, when you're in your neck, like your, your windpipe gets broke. That's what happened to Gabby. That didn't happen to Shanann. So when she's getting choked out, um, I hate to even say it like that. She's just getting oxygen, a lack of it flowed to her brain. So that's how Shanann died. It wasn't like your windpipe broke and then you like can't breathe because like your windpipe's broken. It was everything was still intact in her neck, but she lost oxygen flow. So it was like it wasn't as hard as Brian Laundry did. You know what I mean? So that's where I think she was sedated. I don't obviously know that. Um, other people say, well, it must have been a woman doing it if it wasn't, you know, that hard. I don't know. I don't know about that. I think that Chris had a lot to do more in, you know, involvement with Shanann's death than some people think. But again, I, I do see why some people would say perhaps it was a woman who did it. Um, Zoe asked, why was he drawing a rectangle on the table? So that's the other weird thing when they ask him to describe the like size of the hatch. Um, he like draws it like huge. And it's like this almost like not a round shape. So again, it's just like, what is he doing? Like, it, what is he describing? Because it's not what we see like for the hatch opening. Um, oh guys, let's God. let's finish this up. I don't want to keep Alex all night. Paul Kessinger worked in the safety department during this time and multiple employees mentioned that ever since the house explosion, Anna Darko was cracking down on safety regulations and Nicole was put in charge of those regulations and those monitors. Not only did the family of the house explosion sue Anna Darko, but shareholders started a lawsuit that alleged Anna Darko Petroleum was focused on keeping old wells running and not fixing potential safety problems in the months before the fatal house explosion. So I've linked that whole article in the description box. I'm not gonna go through it. It's kind of long. But it pretty much talks about six former Anadarko employees who were whistleblowers as part of this um, shareholder suit. And what pretty much happened was people who bought share and stock into Anadarko lost a bunch of money when this house explosion took place because um, oil stocks dropped. You know what I mean? So they bought in thinking that they were following regulations, come to find out they weren't. So they lost all this money and then they decided to sue Anna Darko and say like, hey, like we want our money back. You weren't doing your end of everything. That's why we invested in you guys because we thought you were following your protocols. Um, it says after Firestone explosion, a former state spokeswoman says an Anna Darko executive told her keep quiet and shovel shit about safety problems. So that article is really interesting. Not going to put you guys right. through it. It's kind of long, but. This what is also interesting about this lawsuit is it got dismissed. So people tried to get money from Anna Darko, who bought shares in this stock and lost money, and a judge dismissed it. So when we talk about politics in this case and in Colorado, it seems like the oil industry very much has like the law and um, law and order you know, the judicial system on their side. So instead of, you know, making Anna Darko pay out these shareholders who were very much upset and, you know, six former employees go in and in this article, they pretty much tell you everything I tried to sum up tonight. Like they were told to follow this and they weren't doing it. They were um, cutting corners to make their own pockets bigger and just corporate greed pretty much. Um, and the suit gets dismissed. So it just makes me wonder if, you know, did NK and her father and them have stock or oil stocks? You know, were they um, people who were upset about losing money? Um, or the I don't know. House explosion. Well, you this know, is, um, yeah. oh, I'm no, sorry. Anna Darko donate, 
they donate millions of dollars to the Republican Party in Colorado and they donate or, you know, and they also donate to the Democratic Party that those at least those years around this um, a little less there. But the D.A. is actually he ran as a Republican. It's really interesting. There are some like I could see why they're taking it easy on him because they pay a ton of money into the state government yeah and ben ben says suing a company because stock prices all public record why well they weren't suing just because the stocks dropped they sued because they felt they were misled and lied to about everything that anna darko stood for so they were told like yes this company is you know we're up and coming or we just bought this from it was owned by somebody else before um and you know you can you can trust us. You can buy stock in us. And then come to find out, they realize that like they weren't following everything they were told they were following. So that's why they sued. It wasn't because their stocks fell. It was because they were misled into thinking that this company was something that they could um, invest in. So it, it's kind of it's more deeper than just, you know, they lost money in stocks. It's they were very much misled in what this company stood for. Um, and this is just a picture of Troy McCoy in the Watts house. I'm showing this because he told people in his law enforcement interview that he didn't really hang out with Chris outside of work. Um, as he's at Shanann's house, this is in January. It shows through Nicole Kessinger's phone data that what the same day that this party was taking place, Nicole Kessinger was searching Shanann Watts. Yeah, it's fraud. Mm. So that's why they tried to sue, but then it got dismissed. So what do you think about that, Troy being the at the house? same day? Yes. I the didn't same know that. Day oh, my God. Party. Okay, I'll be and honest with you. So when it comes to Troy, I watched his interview, but I never leaned into that like that side of the that theory at all, really. So I watched it once and kind of blew it off. I was always more of a, I think this was Ben Kay and Chris. You know, I could see political ties especially with the money and Anna Darko with her dad, potentially things like that. But this is crazy. I did not know any of this that you've told me tonight about Troy. Like now I got to know more about him. Yeah. It's, it's unsettling. And the, the fact that he tried to really distance himself from knowing being close to Watts, it's like, but you're at his house. Um, he also never mentions knowing Nicole Kessinger and Anthony Brown, another coworker who we went through his statement a few streams ago, um, knew that they were seeing each other. So how is Troy never mentioning Nicole Kessinger in any of his interviews? And Nicole Kessinger never never mentions Troy. I cannot believe that's the same day. What are the odds of that? I know. And, you know, not only is that the same day, but it's also months before she's ever worked with Chris. She told law enforcement, including FBI, it's a federal offense to lie to a federal agent, that she met him at work. So how are you searching his wife and him before you're ever even working with him? Yeah. Yeah. Come on now. That has always, that's just like one of the reasons I've always thought there's so many things with, with her. That's, but I never... You have me so interested in knowing more about, I hope that you will do his interview and stuff in the future soon, because I think that's going to be really good. I for will. People who haven't looked at him so close. It's, it's a <laughs> deep rabbit hole for Troy, but I'll get there eventually. So this is just showing the gas can that Chris loaded in back of his truck. Um, they, the trucks that they run do not run on gasoline. So this wasn't as something like, oh, well, you know, they all have them just in case they run out of fuel out there. Like, no, they they don't run on gas. You can find all that in the discovery. Um, so that has always kind of puzzled me and other people who kind of lean towards this explosion theory. Like, what was the gas for? Um, again, I'm not saying that that was for the explosion, but there was a lighter in the passenger side panel found, too, in his truck. But because I don't know how, you know, this would have taken place, you know, but that's always been something that's kind of like, so what was the point of having that in the in the truck? You know what I mean? Now, before we end yeah. things, I have another thing to kind of show um, 
this is a Venmo that was people were digging into when the case first broke before everything was kind of privated. Um, Brittany G pays Nicole Kessinger uh, in July and uh Chris mentions Brittany in his prison interview and says that Nicole had told her friend Brittany about their affair and she told him or she told Nicole, don't do it. And then she said that she Nicole had said she already made up her mind. So when he mentions that, this is who he's talking about. And then um, I'll show you. So this is when I was researching the case with Crazy Crime Chick we kind of looked up, you know, who this Brittany girl is and I've redacted her name and everything, but, um, and also the one on the right is after the crime took place, but, and this is how we kind of linked Jim to her and knew that this was the Brittany mentioned in the prison interview. Um, Jim had liked her new photo of her new house she got. So we know that this is the Brittany that's mentioned in the prison interview you know, why is this related to anything? Well, for some reason, she's sharing um, Bloomberg business info on her Facebook. This, of course, is probably privated by now. This is screenshotted years ago. Um, and somebody had commented on her stuff, her post about, you know, energy and oil and said, time to double down on oil company stocks. And she says, um, I'd wait a little longer. We haven't hit bottom just yet. And then later on, she tags that person and says, and I was right. So again, I don't know exactly what this means, but it kind of leads me to think like, were they hoping to buy oil stocks like with another explosion? Like once it dropped, that's the time. So for example, for those who don't really know much about like stocks, when 9-11 happened, um, Disney stocks dropped significantly. Like they were like, you know, because no one was traveling when 9-11 happened. So that was the time when a lot of people bought Disney stock because that's something you can kind of rely on always being a good business and you can kind of trust them, you know? Um, And so people bought stock after 9-11 and Disney that skyrocketed once things kind of got back up to normal. So here I'm wondering, were they going to buy stock with another planned explosion when it was dropped, because we knew that that lawsuit happened because oil stocks dropped, you know what I mean? And then once you buy stock, once things get back up, because oil companies, you know, are something you can kind of rely on, we're always using oil. Um, Were they hoping to kind of get like a beneficial um, payout with that? Yeah, Mel Mac, you always sum up what I'm trying to say, like so easily, a good investment. Exactly. (laughs) No, you said it perfectly, but um, I don't know. That is interesting, like that they're watching the stocks like that for oil. See, I'm over, I have to get new synonyms for interesting. I say that all the time and I find them, but I don't use them. <laughs> and it's just, but for real, it it, it is odd. And, and you notice that they are paying attention to that kind of stuff, but. Yeah, I mean, I don't... Just weird that's for thing. somebody... Oh, I'm sorry. You're delayed, no, you're Major. I'm delayed. No, go ahead. It's just ahead. weird. That her and her friends are into oil like that, while also we know at least somewhat of what how she believes. And I remember, like, being led to believe that she was practicing... Like she believed Gaia, which is not necessarily a religion, but it's like a, it has to do with the earth and I don't know. Um, But, and then we know about her business, that Satya, which is actually, that's what they were doing there was stuff with that. So um, it's weird that people that are into that and crystals and all of that stuff are also like, watching oil stocks and working for oil companies that that are I don't know that's just it doesn't well that's why it's like so then did they want to stage this explosion to kind of put push a political point like this fracking that we're doing to the earth is not good we've already seen a house explosion now we have this pregnant mother who died you know what I mean but the plan never happened Mm -hmm. so they're like whole 
purpose never went through. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But when you think about this theory with so many people that would know the details, like, would you, do you think that Brittany would know the details of this plan? Like that many pe people? Right. It's or, like, that's where it gets kind of who's more. involved in all that because the smaller the group that knows, the better, you know, that it is, you know? Um, it's yeah. hard to say who exactly knew about Shanann as part of this explosion plan. Um it's hard. It's like or one of those. There was already a. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, finish. But no, you're fine. One of those. <laughs> no, you paused, and our delay is is messing with me. <laughs> but um, you said yeah, it's hard to know who all would know about Shanann, and I know. I know it, it's, it's hard. It's a hard theory to kind of iron out as like, yes. And then this and that. And all I have is like very little circumstantial stuff that kind of, to me, I just lean towards, like, I think that this was it. I think that the thing that's bigger in this case has to do with money has to do with um, a political point maybe. Cause again, a lot of people were against fracking but they just don't have power against the oil companies. So, you know, her being new at the job, like, did she just kind of get put there, like, to kind of do this objective? I don't know. It's very hard to kind of sell this theory. <laughs> um, that's why I've linked stuff <laughs> in the inbox for people to kind of go down their own rabbit holes with this because there's so much to this that I just can't, I don't have time to share like that whole article. I think you guys would get a picture of like the climate working at Anadarko people like questioned if they even wanted to work there anymore because of the principles that were just being tossed out the window. Um, and people's lot, I mean, once that house explosion took place, you would think that the company would turn around and be like, well, yeah, we need to like, you know, fix every single broken. Well, you know, we can't have this happen again. But yet they weren't. Um, and there's other articles in the description box that show that they were told, like mandated to have cameras out at their sites. And even after all this stuff happens, they still didn't put cameras out there. They ended up demolishing Survey 319, like where the bodies were. It had nothing to do with the case. You know, it wasn't like they were like, take it down. We don't want to have it there. It was because it was falling apart. Like they, they couldn't salvage that well site. Mm. Well, uh, I ask because is it like, is it possible? That, Cause you know that there's people who do dirty business everywhere. Um, mm -hmm. Was there a plan that didn't involve Shanann that like Chris or Nicole or whoever was going to take advantage of? And it, I don't know. There's a lot of possibilities if you really like, try to make your mind like follow your theory because I think that you can in a lot of ways that I've all there's just there's some weird stuff happening that we definitely don't have the answers to and we've been led to believe that it's one way and told and really kind of been almost chastised for even questioning it like at a yeah. Certain, like yeah so I think it's really cool to to think about and yeah yeah, I can't and wait to keep watching you follow along the way to follow you oh. along the way listening. Thank you. Of course, I do think that this crime was horrible. And it's not just about proving like certain theories that I have. Um, I think showing the right. corruption in things is important, too. And I think that there's so much in this case, like law enforcement, district attorney, judges, oil company. I mean, pick your topic, you know, there's corruption all over this case. Um, thank you, Pizza Chemist, for the gifted memberships. And welcome to all the new members. And I just wanted to read through some comments real quick. I'm chewing my gummies as we're speaking. Because <laughs> I'm going to be getting ready for bed mm -hmm. after this. But um, yeah, fracking is bad for groundwater and it causes earthquakes. Um can cause other things too, like asthma and children as well. Like it, it's, it's just not, it's something that's very politically debated in Colorado. And it was at this time. 
Florida Bass, thank you so much for being here. I, I hope you have a wonderful night. Um, let's see. Will I do a live with what's the obsession about the explosion theory? She's totally up for it. I it's it's kind of exhausting to kind of go through. Um, I'm not opposed to doing a live stream with her. I just don't think that I can sit here <laughs> again and try to like yeah. iron it all out. That's why I link it all. Yeah. 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 That's why I link stuff in my description box and kind of um touch on things in my um live streams that kind of go towards that theory but there's so much to cover in this case like besides just the explosion theory like it gets exhausting um to be honest but i'm not opposed to collabing with her as beautiful as shanann was and the girls and with their social media following they would make a perfect high profile victims for an explosion plan and i you know i think that that's what the objective was honestly why do I think the explosion plan failed? Well, the Nicole Atkinson and the cops show up. And he's telling, asking the cops if he can leave and go look for his family. I think he was trying to get back and complete the plan. Um, Sandy Rusek said that he kept telling people he had to get back to work. You know, I think that that's what needed to be completed. And at that point, from day one, he's under surveillance. He, I mean, it's touched on in the discovery files, like they were watching him. So there's no way that he could have gone out there to serve you and been like, okay, I'm going to do the plan now. You know, it was too late. You know, they probably were burying Shanann and all that, like disposing of the children. That's just my theory, of course. Big money would have been made for Chris, Troy, Boy, and others would have made out like bandits if there was an explosion. Just saying. I think so. What do you think about that? I think there's a potential for money for sure. And a lot of corruption with oil and all of this. And then you have the affair going on. I just think there's a lot of potential for a lot of nastiness like that with people being so greedy the way they are. But can I ask you, like, what do you think about, remember all the water was gone in that one toilet and then, you know, he was asking about the pipes Yeah. You know, that's something that I go round and round with, like in my own head, like, was the explosion going to be at the house? Like, were they going to replicate something like that? Um, but then I'm like, no, I don't think so. I, I don't know. I, I Maybe the um, chemicals used to sedate her was dumped down the drain. And he was hoping they could, like, get evidence of that. I really don't know. Um, the, the water in the toilet being completely gone is so odd. Um, especially cause there was water in the top. And I don't know if you guys have ever dumped, like if you've mopped and dumped the bucket down the toilet, it like flushes all the water. Have you ever done that mm -hmm. experiment? Yep. Yep. So I'm like, where did he like, did somebody dump like a massive amount of some chemical and it like flushed it to where it was dry? I don't know. I've never done that. Like when I've done it, it, it always like flushes almost as if you flush the toilet. Oh, really? You know what I mean, and it comes back up. Like, yeah, when I dump a, a bucket of water in the toilet, it's always flushed it, but then it fills back up with water. Like when you're like when you flush the toilet. Do a bigger bucket next time. I'm telling you, if, if you dump a, a bunch of like liquid down there for some reason, it like dumped the liquid from a carpet cleaner possibly maybe but this this was oh wait no that that was filmed after he had it stayed will the go night. yeah yes i'm telling you i'm telling you okay because like i've seen people do it if like the toilet um wouldn't flush or something like that or the flush the handle was broken and they need to flush it that way so they'll pull a, pour a bucket down it and it'll flush the toilet Uh, I'm going to do this only if wow, your water feel on back the toilet is on. Oh, okay. It, it's weird. It's weird. It, it's only like if uh, it, it's hard to say how much liquid it would take, but there has been times where I've dumped like a mop bucket and like it, all the water ends up like emptying out. And I'm like, wait, what? Mm, okay. Somebody said maybe so there was water in the back of it. Yeah, there was water at the yeah, top. Yeah, 
I just know that it was weird. And they were like, even the people searching were like, huh? <laughs> yeah, they were <laughs> like puzzled by it. What? And so many people have uh -huh. said, well, there was toddlers and blah, blah, blah. I don't think... I don't know. Cause then he had the, the bathroom door locked. So like, what do you need to lock the door and have the toilet drained? Like what's the purpose? You know, it's, so it's usually like maybe one or the other. And like they were, Cece was little, but like, I feel like she was old enough to know, like, I'm not going to play in the toilet, but who knows? That's just a, definitely something that has puzzled me for a long time. I will say that. Yeah, me too. Me too. There's a lot of things that puzzle me. I could go on and on asking questions. I could think about 10 more right now, but I'll, I'll save it for. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we, we definitely can continue this if you want to come back on sometime and talk. Again, I do this every Thursday. Um, so I don't know like when you want to join, but just let me know because I know chat loved having you here. And again, if you guys want to follow Alex, her stuff is in my description box. Even in the title, how I've tagged her, you can just click on her name in the title and it'll bring you right to her channel. So I definitely recommend you guys um, subscribing to Alex and I moderate over on her channel too. So if we're in live chats, um, I'll be in her chat moderating and we can just hang out over there. Um, anything else you wanted to say or anything while we close out? No, not really. I mean, like I said, I could think of a million other things that stand out to me. But um, as far as with the explosion theory and that kind of stuff, I'm really I'll, I'll just be definitely watching you along the way because I'm really interested in these new people. I, you've taught me stuff. You've always I've always learned stuff here. Like um, I remember the first place I uh, learned about her eyes not being bloodshot was here um years ago but even now you still have taught me stuff like tonight about Troy and some of those inconsistencies I was totally unaware of even though I had watched his interview I guess if you watch it without any of this stuff in mind and you're just like new to the case a lot of that stuff doesn't really stand out to you and and then like I was kind of closed-minded once I did get more into the case I was more close minded to like the bigger theories with like multiple people and more set on like a Chris and NK thing. But um, now I'm just really, I don't know, I'm open to listening. I'm more open minded now to listening and kind of thinking about it. So, well, I appreciate yeah. that. And again, um, I'm not like here to make anybody believe my theory. You know what I mean? Like for people in chat saying like, yes, iron this out and show it to some, I don't want to like go on here and debate and tell people my theory's right and yours not. Because the thing about this case is without the trial and without the full evidence, you know, we don't have DNA linking, like, do people realize we don't have DNA linking Chris to these crimes? Like, I'm not saying he's not linked to them. I'm just saying, like, there's nothing in the lab. Nothing got done. Yeah. Even Tammy is well aware and has admitted that the investigation, like, was halted when they were running full speed in the middle of it. And there was nothing got finished. That's just the truth. Right. On TV. Like she, she was out there posting on Facebook the week of his arrest. Um, we'll never stop fighting for you, Shanann, Bella, Cece. Um, I don't even know if she knew the baby's name at that point, but the, you know, she said that and it's like, but the plea deal kind of ended everything. So what do you mean you'll never stop fighting? It just seemed like maybe it blindsided them as well. Yeah, definitely. Well, they should have fought for it, but that's just my opinion. <laughs> Me too. And in the prison interview, they had so many opportunities to kind of go and get deeper things, and they didn't. They still kind of were leading the conversations. But that's for another night. <laughs> thank you guys so much for being here, and thank yeah. you, Alex, for being here. Um, we'll have to do this again thank if you, you for want. Me. Of course, anytime. Oh, I'm down. Okay. All right, guys. Um, make sure you subscribe to Alex and hit that thumbs up and we will talk very soon. Bye everybody. Bye.